Now we present Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X. Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. By special request, we're repeating this story as a reminder that Christmas is one time of the year when even miracles can happen. A time for a shabby world to lift up its tired eyes and learn once again to hope and to dream. And a time for the strangest adventure in the whole career of the man called X. I finally got the call through to Cairo, Chief. They still don't have any report on Mr. Thurston. Oh... Then try checking again with Tehran, Miss Brooks. All the Tehran lines are out of order. Cairo says there's a terrific storm over the Transjordan Hills. Transjordan? That's right in the route Ken must have taken. You, you don't think he's run into trouble? All I know is that Ken chartered a plane in Tehran and took off for Egypt with Pagan Zelshman aboard. Right now, he's four hours overdue at Cairo, and there's been no report on him. He must be all right. He's got to be all right. Hmm. What were you planning to do Christmas, Miss Brooks? Take a trip? Well, no, I... I thought I'd probably stay here in the city. I mean, well... I see. Well, he still has time to get home for Christmas. Oh, but, Chief, I, I it's didn't It's all mean... right, Miss Brooks. I understand. I don't know. I don't know. There's a dozen simple things that might have happened. But believe me, I'd give a lot to know what Ken's doing right this minute. <laughs> Blacker than the inside of a head out there, Mr. Thurston. How can you, can you even see what to fly this plane? Pagan, I can't. Huh? Then what are we going to do? I know what I'd like to do is that mechanic can tear around. Not an instrument on this board is working right. Oh. The way we've been kicked around in this storm, I don't even know what. Uh-oh. Mr. Rex, the engine's come down. Yeah. What do we do now? If I could only get one look at the ground, I don't even know how far up we are. I think I'm as good as death pigeon right this... Look! In that lightning flash! Yeah. Top of a hill. Get ahead. Mr. Rex! We're going to hit! If I can get a level off, hang on, Pagan! Mr. Thurston, we got to do something. We can't just lie there. Say something, Mr. Rex. Can't you hear me? I can hear you, Pagar. I'm getting very dizzy, Mr. X. I don't know. I... I think I'm... I can't. I... Come out now. Come outside to the top of the hill. Mm-hmm. Come out. Out into the night. Stand with me here. And look at the world. Yes. All right, I'm coming. Wait for me. I heard you calling out here in the darkness, child. It was you whom I called, sir. A storm was raging, but now... Now it's grown very still. And there are a million glittering stars. There can be no storm where I am. Yes, yes, I know. The friend who was with me, what about him? He lies there in the great bird that fell from the sky, even as you do. So will it be for a time. I understand. But you, child, why are you here alone in the night? I came to look for one last time at a foolish world before leaving it. Before? I have decided I shall not grow up. Not grow up? But you're very young. Younger than I've ever believed. Why have you decided this? Because to grow, I must live. Men must want me to live. And no place on earth today can be called my home. Listen. Can you not hear it? The voice of the world rising up out of the dark valleys below this hill. Yes. 
I can hear it. That voice. It's so terrible with its jealousy, greed, selfishness, hate. It's not pretty. Can I live and grow up in a world like that? Oh, but child, you, you can't judge mankind from the top of a hill. You have to go down among them. I've been down among them. Seen their wars and heard rumors of wars. There are other things to hear. But you know how to listen, and I can show them to you. Come with me now. Down there? Down in those valleys? How can we? Why not? It's Christmas, so anything can happen. Come along, child. Come with me. It's the little boy who's playing. Tiny Tim. He's he's crippled, isn't he? Yes. Wait. Listen. Glad you play it better every month. It's a great virtuoso you'll be, Tiny Tim. It's a marvelous song, Jimmy boy. Oh, thank you, everyone. Maybe when spring comes, I shall be able to play for pennies in the streets. Then I'll be a help to you, Father. Bless you, lad. Now I think I should tune my fiddle. One string was ever so slightly flat, you know. Such a serious lad. <laughs> she says strange things sometimes. He told me in church this morning he hoped all the people would see him and remember who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Oh, it's a lucky family we are, Robert. There's few in this world that have as much as we. Oh, that's something of a joke, my dear, with the little I'm able to give you. Robert Cratchit. When I think of all the years we've had and such wonderful children... And you, always so cheerful and understanding of our needs. Oh, go along with you now. And what about that surprise? <gasps> oh, to life, I'd almost forgotten it. Quiet, everybody. I have a surprise for you. I'll bring it right in. Now, I wonder what it could possibly be. I'll wager I can guess, Father. Look, everyone. Here it is. A plum pudding blazing like the sun itself. It's saying Merry Christmas to all of us. Yes, and God bless us. God bless us, everyone. Timmy, lad, such a beautiful dish needs a real salute. Take your fiddle and play us an overture to the pudding. Yes, an overture to the pudding. <laughs> Any reason why you couldn't find a home there, child? Oh, it would be so easy if all people were like them. There are a great many like them, if you know where to look. What are their names? The family we saw. That was the family of a certain Bob Cratchit, a clerk in the London firm of Scrooge and Marley in the year 1840. Oh, the Christmas Carol. Those were not even real people. They came from a book. Must I live then only in old books? This is here and now. Things are different. Are they so very different? Look up. Aren't those the same stars that glittered overhead a hundred years ago? Or a thousand? Or ten thousand? Real people sleep in the dirt and never look at the stars. Not all of them. I can think of one right now on the other side of the earth. In a little flat in Queens. I could walk up a certain stairway there tonight and ring a doorbell. Ken Thurston. Hello, Marion. Oh, Ken, come in. Oh, it's good to see you. Here, let me take some of those packages. Well, thanks. Guess I was pretty well loaded down. Who is it, Mommy? Who's there? It's Mr. Thurston, Donnie. You remember Daddy's friend. Hey, sure I remember. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Hiya, Donnie. Look, packages. I'll bet you they're presents. Take them into the other room, dear, and put them around your tree. All right. Boy, I wonder what's inside of these old packages anyway. <laughs> oh, he's growing so fast, Ken. And every day he looks more like Jerry did. Yes, I've, I've noticed that. I wouldn't want it any other way, Ken. That's how it should be. Why, it's the only reason for my still being alive. You're a pretty brave girl, Marion. No, it was Jerry who was brave at Anzio. What he did was for Donnie, too, you know. Are you, uh, you getting along all right, Marion? I'm... Is there anything you need? We're getting along perfectly. Oh, I resent my job keeping me away from my son in the daytime. 
But we the evenings, and the park on Sundays, and snow in winter, and and merry-go-rounds, and ice cream sodas, and... Oh, don't worry about us, Ken. We'll be all right. Yes. If there's one thing in this shaky world I'm certain of, it's that. You'll be all right. Well, child, I could open other doors like that one, many others. But she was a heroine, and they are too few and far between. Try to walk a hundred steps without finding one. It is of no use. I know you as one whom sometimes men call X. You too fight for my cause. But the world is filled with hate, and I shall live in it no longer. All right. Then I'll show you why you've got to live. Grow up. Even if it takes proof so fantastic as to seem incredible. How can you? How can you know what I need when you don't even know my name? Would you like me to say it for you? Could you? You know who I am? Yes, child. I know who you are. I know very well who you are. We'll continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. And now to continue with The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall with Leon Velasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. Somewhere between Cairo and Tehran, a plane carrying Ken Thurston and Pagan fought its way through a raging storm. In a blinding flash of lightning, a hilltop loomed ahead, and a second later, the plane smashed into it. Then suddenly the storm was gone. A million cold, bright stars glittered overhead, and Ken stood outside on the hilltop, talking to a strange little girl who seemingly came from nowhere, everywhere. Proof indeed that at Christmas time, anything can happen. know that I want to live and to grow. I've loved this world. Seen beautiful things happen in it and found hope in them. And then each time I've seen that hope die. The world has not grown wise nor clean. The years have only made it old and unclean. Not fit to live in. Well, hope in it yet, child. Hope for both of us. After all, I think we're both searching for the same thing. I'm done with searching, and with hoping, and with living. And what of those who follow you, believe in you? What about those people who all their lives put the needs of humanity above their own needs? Are there such on the earth anymore? Are the stars still overhead? Do you know even one? I know a lot of them, down in those valleys below us. But let's, let's take just one. A man I've known for a long time. I've got a pretty good idea where he might find him tonight. Look a long way off, child. Look half around the world. Mm. Possibly some stricture there, all right. A thrombus, maybe. Uh, how's the pulse? Still fast. 97, Doctor. Mm. Well, that's all we can do now. Uh, what time is it, Miss Nelson? After midnight. Oh, good Lord. No wonder I'm tired. Dr. Richards. I've been a supervisor with this hospital long enough to have a right to contradict you once in a while. Hmm? About what? You're not tired because it's after midnight. You're tired because you haven't had a decent night's sleep in five years. Oh. What's more, you had a checkup at the clinic six months ago. I happen to know what they told you. Oh, they didn't know what they were talking about. A bunch of crepe hangers. They told you to work only four hours a day. Now, when are you going to start doing it? Four hours a day. When people are dying 24 hours a day. There are other doctors. Yeah, and there are other problems for them, too. Why, you've seen kids like this come in here year after year. We can never do a darn thing for them. Well, now, after five years, I can do something for them, and in another year, I'll have the technique perfected so every doctor can use it. If you live long enough. Yes, well, I'll live long enough. If I stopped now, threw away the chance to beat this thing just so I could live another 20 years, then... Why, there'd be no sense to anything in this world. You've got a life, too, Dr. Richards. Uh, poppycock. I... Well, I suppose you think I'm a fool, Miss Nelson. If I told you what I think you are, you'd... You'd just laugh it off. No. No, Dr. Richards. I don't think you're a fool. (laughs) 
Can't you believe there are others, child? Other people who think of their fellow men first and themselves second. Yes. Oh, yes, there must be others. And can't they be called believers in you, these selfless people? Yes. But they, too, are heroes. Ordinary people must believe if I'm to live and grow up. Well, what, what can be more ordinary than a boy and girl in love? Paris or London, Vienna, Shanghai, New York. There's nothing in the world so beautifully ordinary as a boy and girl in love. It's lovely out there across the harbor. Even like tonight when it's foggy. As long as you're in it, honey, the whole world's lovely. We're terribly lucky, you know. Supposing we hadn't found each other. Well, we couldn't miss. We're a natural. How could you tell? The first time, I mean. What made you know you were in love with me? You came down the street in a crowd. And all of a sudden, there wasn't any crowd. Only you. So I decided I must be in love. Do you think there may be other people as happy somewhere in the world? Not a chance. Oh, there must be. People who are in love, too. Millions of them. Oh, I love every one of them. Now I am jealous. No, but you do, too. You know you do. It makes you feel close to them. Yeah. I guess I do it there. Listen. Isn't that a mournful sound? I can't hear it. When I look at you, all I can hear is music. I know. I can hear it, too. The most beautiful music in the world. It says I love you. I love you, my darling. Oh, it's true. There are millions who love someone else. And with them, I can have hope. For they can see beyond themselves. Sometimes far beyond. Far enough to see you and believe in you. They do want me to live and grow up. All those who love. There are even greater reasons, child. But they're in a place a long way off from the starlit hill and the dark valleys and the wrecked plain lying over there. Then we can go to them. We can go anywhere tonight. Because it's Christmas time when anything can happen. We can try. Do you know what time means? It's a stream that flows forever in one direction. We'll have to move against it. For this place lies far up the stream, toward the headwaters of time, outside the universe, a long way off. But we can try. <laughs> This is the realm of tomorrow. But all of these wonderful things. I have no names for them. There are no names for them, child. They're still a part of tomorrow. This one. Oh, how beautiful. Look at it. Just look at it. It's one of tomorrow's dreams, child. Gilded with expectation. Gleaming with fulfillment. And this one. Oh, how lovely. That's one of tomorrow's hopes. It's an ideal, not yet realized. Another part of tomorrow. Oh, there are so many wondrous things. Things never seen on the face of the earth. Nor will they ever be. If you decide not to live. Wait. This door. Where does it lead? Why not open it? Find out. I will. I will. the unborn. And there'll never be anything else unless you decide to live. Oh, they're so beautiful. Everything here is so beautiful. 
It can't be lost. We can't let it be lost. The choice is your child. It's your choice. I've made my choice. Let's go back. Back to the hill and the stars and the valleys of the world. did I ever think it wasn't? But the voice of hate still stops, sounds from it. Have you forgotten? No. But hate only sounds big because it has the loudest voice. I can hear another sound. Far off in the black night. It's a voice from the hearts of heroes. A song of hope and love and understanding. You call them heroes. Why not men of goodwill? of goodwill. I can live in a world that has such men. And you must live for such men. They are the ones who believe in you. Yes. And they must believe as I believe in them. Know this, you who are called X. I shall live and I shall grow. And someday I shall rule this world. Wait, don't go. I must. It is nearly dawn. You are waking up. You understand? You are waking up. You are waking up. Yes. Yes. I understand. Oh, what? What? Oh. Pagan. 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 Look out. Look, we're going to hit. No, Pagan. What? Oh, oh. Mr. X, what happened? Came in for three rough landings, Doc. Must have been out cold for hours. The dawn's starting to break over there. Oh, 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 I'm so stiff. I must have broken a leg or something. Let's get out of this wreck and walk around a little. Mr. Ferris, you shouldn't have woke me up. I was having a beautiful dream. All about money. Yes, I had a dream, too. Hand me that map. Huh? Oh, oh, here. So was it about money, Mr. Rex? It was about a little girl. A little girl? Anybody we know? Mm, somebody a lot of people know. And a lot of others ought to know. Yeah? Uh, what's her name? Oh, the French call her Pay. The Romans used to call her Pax. Pega, her name is Peace. Peace. That's a strange name. Oh, she's a strange little girl. Come on, Pagan. Let's get out of this wreck. Hey, look, Mr. X. Down there in the flat. It's a little town. Yeah. That's what I was checking on the map. Come on. I want to get a wire off to the chief. Which way? Down this path? No, no, Pagan. Straight ahead. Toward the sunrise. Mr. Thurston, look. The sun's coming up. It's shining on all those houses, turning in purple and red and gold. All kinds of colors. Hey, what's the name of that little town anyway? Pagan, if the map is right, if that dream was true, that little town is called Bethlehem. Here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And thank you, Anne Whitfield, for your sweet performance. I wish I could see all of you out there, see you and talk with you and shake your hand. Because almost anything can happen at Christmas, I almost feel that I can. And so, I say to you, each of you, for all of us on The Man Called X, from the bottom of our hearts, Merry Christmas. Next week, that old headhunter, Pagon Zellschmidt, played as usual by Leon Belasco. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night.
The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. The Man Called X is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. Also heard in tonight's cast were Will Wright, Barbara Fuller, Eric Snowden, Irene Tedrow, Henry Blair, Theodore Von Oates, Lucille Meredith, Maggie Morley, and Harry Bartell. And until next week, same time and same station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. On NBC.